Hi and welcome. At Build Poet Scandinavia, we often receive complex questions from our Idea Statica users. But just as often, we hear about common issues that many users encounter from time to time. In this video, I'll walk you through some of these classic problems and most importantly, how to solve them. So I have my connection and I'm going to uh, try to solve it now. So I hit calculate and now this happens. So I have a singularity error and I have no results basically. And I can also see that one of the parts are uh, moved out of the connection. And this is a typical symptom of a missing weld. So how to solve it? Well, we have to go back and look for uh, the missing weld and right now I can see that the lower uh, so the bottom stiffeners they have no welds on them so I can fix it by inputting uh, turning on a fillet weld and now I can try to run the analysis again and there we go now we have results and I can move on with my uh, analysis. Here is a case where I have two plates that are going to be connected to concrete via some anchor bolts. And most people, they want to use the base plate operation, but it will not work um, because we have two plates here and we have to go more manual and use a bolt grid operation instead for every for for both of the plates so i will show you how it works we can start by choosing the fastener grid or contact operation and now we can define how this uh, these bolts uh, are going to work so let's first switch out from bolts to anchors and now we have a concrete block that we can work with. It's in the wrong uh, spot, so we will fix it. First of all, we will choose what plate will be connected. I will start with the upper one and then define the length of the anchors. And now we can locate the concrete block uh, in the right spot. So we will choose the correct plate, like so. And now we can also position the bolts in the correct position. Like that. And we also have to extend the concrete block because the lower plate will also be connected to the concrete later on. So let's put the offset. on the concrete block, like so. And now to connect the second plate to the same concrete block, we can now copy this grid operation and tell the program that the second plate should also be connected to concrete via anchors. But now we have two concrete blocks. Uh, we don't want that. We want to have one single concrete block. So we can simply go down here to foundation block and switch out from new block to existing block. And now we have two plates connected to one concrete block with uh, anchor bolts. So in this case, we have uh, two members that uh, we want to connect. So the beam, I want to weld it to the flange of the column. And in many cases, we see that users start to uh, move the members around to, to be able to weld them or fit them together. And um, yeah, 
that can be scary in some cases because if I switch over to the analytical view or the wireframe view, then we can see how the analytical model uh, looks. So now we have the node where the two members meet, and this is correct. But if I put the offset on member B, like here, I'll move member B 200 millimeters downwards. And if I continue to connect the member and run the analysis, I will run into problems because I now have included or introduced uh, eccentricity. If I switch back to the analytical view, I can see that the node is still in the same place, but member B is now shifted 200 millimeters down. So to fix this, uh, I will show you a quick tip on how to extend a member. For example, the column. So let's uh, switch it back to the original um, placement. And now I, I want to extend the column and then connect the members. So I, now I can introduce a cut. And in this cut operation, I can now um, set the correct members. And now I can choose to extend the member. Like so. Now we can see that member C, or the column, is extended. And I can even put an offset, a negative offset, like so. And I can deactivate the welds. And now to finish it off, I can introduce another cut and I will cut member B against member C. And now I have the finished connection. So you see that uh, by extending the column, we get a more uh, reliable result. And the node is still in the same place. Have you seen this before? In this connection, one of the members, it's failing dramatically. And we can look at the formations as well, that the member is actually missing. Uh, it's deforming uh, in an unphysical way. Uh, it's somewhere in the space uh, out here. So there is something wrong in the setup of this uh, model, and we will try to find out what it is. So let's look at how this member is uh, set up. If I click the member, I can see that the model type, it's set to the default, uh, where all of the forces can be applied to the member. But in cases where you have a one bolt connection, you will have to, uh, actually have to restrain the member uh, in, some, in some ways. So, in this case, the correct setting is the NVY VSET. So this member is only allowed to receive the normal force and the shear force in the set and Y direction uh, in the local coordinate system. This is to prevent a mechanism because Idea Statica is not set up to deal with mechanisms. And when the input is correct for all of these one bolt connections, then I will have results that I can trust. So now that all of the members uh, have the correct model type, uh, because they have a one bolt connection, then I will have results that are converging and I will have reasonable deformations uh, according to how the members are actually uh, in the reality. Okay, so remember to set the correct model type and the correct degrees of freedom on each member. So let's say that you want to attach a uh, plate to a circular hollow section. You can either choose a, uh, a full weld in the all around, 
or you can have a partial intermittent uh, weld. So I can show you how you can do that. The first option is to choose a cutoff plate where we now can choose a surface cut. Then the plate will be cut by the member and we now have a cut with a weld included. I can also have a double fillet weld defined. But in the case where you want to have more freedom, you want to maybe have a partial or intermittent uh, weld, uh, that is uh, not possible in this case. For example, here we don't have the option of a partial or intermittent weld. I can uh, turn off the weld in this operation and define a manual weld with the weld or contact operation. But here I can't define the weld either. So it's uh, simply impossible to weld this plate to this circle hollow section. Uh, but I can switch out the circular hollow section with a polygon shape circular hollow section and we ha then have more freedom. So let's do that. I will now go to the cold formed sections and choose the cold form regular polygon shape and here I can input uh, the size and then the number of vertices I will choose yeah, 42 and then the thickness and the radius radius of the fold so now we have a different section and we have more freedom so for example now I can choose which element I want to weld. Now I chose this one and if I want to add another weld to another element I can copy this weld operation and simply choose another web on the column and so on. And another tip uh, is that you can actually copy operations to save time like I'm doing now. I don't have to define a new operation every time. I can simply copy the one that I already have and make a small change to it like this. In this case I have two circular hollow sections that I want to weld together and perform a analysis and code check on. So when I inspect the model I can see that there is something uh, strange going on with uh, one of the welds. So this is a typical uh, problem with welding two circular hollow sections together. Um, does this have any implications on the results? I'm not sure. We can have a look at it. If I switch over to the transparent view I can see that there is indeed a weld. Uh, these yellow uh, lines, or uh, yeah, this this uh, implicate that there is a connection between the elements. So there is connection there, but still, the uh, the weld in the three D view is is missing, or rather, it's it's on the uh, wrong side. So we can have a look at the. Uh, the results. I will run the analysis and we can go over to the check tab and look at the weld results. And here I can see that there is some strange results uh, for this weld uh, because we have one peak for this weld. It doesn't necessarily have uh, any implications to the uh, total results, but I would like to fix this uh, small error. So 
I can go back to the design tab and to fix this, I can simply uh, rotate this circular hollow section, for example, one degree and see if that helps. So I put a rotation of one degree and I can see now that visually it looks good. And we can also look at the results. Let's go back to the weld results. And now again, if we look at the welds, we can see that the problem is solved. So it's always important to check your model uh, visually and inspect it and that it makes sense physically. And here's a bonus tip. Uh, let's say that you have a lot of operations, like here. You have a long list of operations and they are sequential. It's important in Idea Statica that uh, the order of operation is uh, yeah, sequential, because that's how the program works. But there is different ways of sorting the operations uh, according to what you uh, want to see. So, for example, let's, see, uh, let's say that uh, I want to change all of the plates here uh, for a different thickness. Then I can go to the operations, right click and switch the sequential view to the by operation type. So now I have a list of all of the stiffening plates. They are still sequential, but they are sorted uh, with now stiffening plates here and then fastener grids under here and so on. So now I can, for example, mark uh, the plates that I want to change the dimensions for. And I can simply write some value, 25 millimeters, and now I changed the thickness on all of these plates. And here's another example where it's, uh, it can be useful to sort it by members. So again, we right click the operation and choose sort by member. So now we have all the members, for example here, member C, and all of the operations connected to member C listed down here. And you can now make changes to them. I hope you found this uh, useful. Thank you. Bye.